Hey everybody, welcome to the Master Wing channel. This is a continuation game of the Wingspan Workshop. This is the climax of our five player game. It's the last round, round four. We have started with our selecting hand, how to walk through some of those decisions, and then round one, we laid that foundation in each of these players' boards. Then in round two, we're looking for those complementary birds or some powerful birds to go with that foundation. Round three is all about extending that habitat, you know, upgrading some of those engines you've built. And then here we are, the last five turns, round four, it's all about scoring points. You want to minimize those scoreless turns. You want 25, 35 points this round. Um, and hopefully those engines and those big point birds, those bonus cards are all coming into play in your last ditch effort to score a high game. So we've previewed some of our boards just to re-familiarize yourself with uh, some of the birds down. And the purple spoonbill player gets to go first. The round end goal is birds in the grassland. And uh, I'm excited. I hope this video helps down the road. I said in a previous video, sometimes when you see 15 blank spaces and... You know, you have all these cards in your hand. It's just a little intimidating how to put together a good game. And I've seen several social media posts of how do I score highly? You know, I'm scoring 50, 60, 70 points. How can I score higher? And so that's what we'd like to show today and break down some of these last five turn decisions. And for the Spoonbill player, we have been drawing cards pretty much ever since round two. Um, nothing's going to change here. I said in a previous video, don't worry about the boring turns. If we're scoring eight or nine points a turn times five, that's looking at 40 points. This is a scary board. It's very one dimensional, uh, with only six birds on the board, uh, but it's getting the job done. And just having gone through some of our previous videos with five players and one of them having this full tuck engine going, I think we're seeing some repeats here. I've never had that happen personally. Um, I've never cycled through the deck this much, I guess. Um, I'm trying to think, maybe 260 cards out there with European expansion and base game. So if you see some repeats from some previous videos, that is why the discard pile is going to be shuffled and seen again in, in this round four. So anyway, the Spoonbill player is the one to beat. We're back to the Wood Duck, the Red Puffin player. And they've got 24 points at least worth of birds in their hand. And even though we have a forest engine, we probably want to get these bird bombs down because uh, that's going to ultimately score us more points. Hoping we can still take advantage of the Rough and the Hooded Crow. We will see. We maxed out our Viticulturist bonus card. You just saw that. And we are going to gain some food here, which is interesting. But I think the reason being, one, we're going to cash extra seeds with the Nutcracker, Titmouse. We're going to tuck with the Robin. But the extra card we get from the Wood Duck can go under Benelli's Eagle. And um, also... Like I said, we're, we're looking for some extra cards with the Rough and the Hooded Crow. We may actually be short some cards in this last round. I said in round four, you want to minimize those scoreless turns. So even though we're gaining food, we're still ticking up on the scoreboard here. I think I'm just trying to calculate what birds I want to play. Um, there is that Golden Eye that, that may be a possibility um, it's kind of late for a pink power, but that may pay off since we are going to be needing some eggs to play the Golden Eagle, the Benelli's Eagle, and Prothonotary Warbler. Honestly, I'm seeing a conflict of interest here because I have two teal powers on the board, the Rough and the Hooded Crow, that require extra cards at the end of the game. But I've touted so much about this Benelli's Eagle being an 11-point bird bomb. And we're going to be tucking cards underneath that bird. So I think the, that, that synergy doesn't really work out when you're tucking your extra cards versus using them to play an eagle. We're going to have to work that out later. Uh, moving on, Spoonbill uh, got the Snow Bunting Pink Power Tuck. 
And the Yellow Owl player had a rough go of it this game. I think we're still trying to... I mean, I think we're making the most of it, but we have a Stellar's J that's worth seven points because we have an Omnivore Expert. We have a Passerine Specialist that we've qualified for on the low end. Uh, I know we have at least four birds that meet that requirement. And then that Red-Winged Blackbird has helped me out kind of in the last round three and now in round four to dispense extra cards for two points. We tuck one and we lay an egg. And that's something you need to take note of in round four. You need to utilize those extra cards, extra food that you've accumulated. This has been a very food sharing friendly game. There was a nightingale at play. There was a blue throat at play. So a lot of these players have extra food and you don't really want to see a lot of extra food in your supply at the end of the game. That could be an indication you didn't fully maximize the resources that were given to you. So that's what we're trying to do. Um, this player currently has an egg space issue. And so we lay eggs here, and the white stork resets the tray. And I think the purple gallinule is the play because it gives me four extra egg spaces. You know, it's seven points. It's not the best bird, but um, again, this person has such an egg space issue with the avocet and the red-legged partridge. The red-legged partridge is what we call an instant engine, in my opinion. You can play that bird in the grassland with two birds on top of it, like one in the forest, one in the wetlands, and you already have a five-point engine. So that's how good the red-legged partridge can be. And check out this little owl stealing rats from the other player. I mentioned in the previous video, the little owl is not a common play, but if everybody has rats, it was more of a guaranteed point than the peregrine falcon. And we have a Prairie Manager bonus card that we've qualified for. And this Chihuahuan Raven is going to help me get excess food. And that excess food is not going to be wasted. It will, use, it will be used for tucks under this Starling. Just kind of reviewing some of the strategy of these players here. So uh, every player, I think, has been scoring points every turn. That's, that's a huge tip in round four. You have the least amount of turns in round four, but sometimes it takes the longest because if you're playing competitively, you need to pause and, and try to do the math on your turn. Sometimes you think it's better to lay eggs, and then you realize, man, I, I should have played that bird to win the end of round goal. And... There's so many variables sometimes in those last five turns of what you could do that I have often rushed through the last five turns thinking, oh, I just need to lay eggs. I just need to gain food. And in reality, you need to slow down and do the math. I've learned that the hard way. Anyway, uh, more tucking for this player. It's just so fun. To do this um it, this player is going to be tough to beat i warn you these are some high scores by everybody uh i i'm excited for you to see it and the problem here is which bird do we play with the wood duck player i'm thinking with some of these other players laying eggs you see i only have two eggs on the board and the likelihood of eggs being laid the last three or four turns is pretty high. Yep. Um, we, we called it. We're reviewing this game after the fact. But the Barrow's Golden Eye is going to turn into a six, seven, maybe even eight point bird. And it'll, it will allow me to play more birds because of its pink power. So, um... Somebody can argue in the comments, should have played Prothonotary or should have played Golden Eagle. There's an argument for those, but at this point in the game, I thought the pink power still could help me finish out the, the Wood Duck game. 
And there goes the Purple Galanul. This player had some rough bonus cards. We've got big zeros on both of these. But we are freeing up some egg space while we can. Nice little five-point play. And then we'll lay eggs again, it looks like. Trying to stay ahead of the egg game. You'll notice, uh, like we said, we don't want to spend turns not scoring, right? And you'll see my hand. I, I mean, I have a couple five-point birds for the Chihuahuan Raven player, but I'm not spending turns drawing cards. And that's something I see a lot of times with new players in round four. They're drawing cards. And maybe if there was something awesome in the tray that you knew for sure you were going to grab, that may not be bad. But right now we have plenty of egg space for the Chihuahuan Raven. And it kind of is what it is. We're going to lay eggs, spam uh, what they call egg spamming. And with the little owl and maybe a Swainson's hawk, that's a five, six, that's a seven point play. And so you don't want to deviate from your best engine the last turns of the game. I think it turns into a six-point play with the Chihuahuan Raven discarding an egg. But the Raven gives you extra food. And we have that great common starling down there in the wetlands to dispense all that extra food. Tell me what you think in the comments about this game. I think for veteran players, this could be um, a little on the basic side. But if you're literally looking how to build a high, high point scoring game, just notice what we're doing here. We haven't talked a ton about end of round goals in a five player game. Uh, you can check out some of my 1v1 gameplay out there, of course. I pay a lot more attention to the end of round goals. But here in this game, we have a forest engine, we have a grassland engine, and we have a wetland engine. So um, I'm interested to see what you guys think. Give that video a like and uh, maybe subscribe and let's play Wingspan together. Uh, we're waiting on the Oceania beta. I mean, excuse me, the final version of the Oceania digital to come out. Um, and so I wanted to at least finish this series and maybe... Two or three years from now, some beginners to Wingspan can follow along and play this with me. And check it out, that Barrow's Golden Eye did get me an extra egg, so now we're up to three. And you can see I am short on food. I don't have enough rats to play the Golden Eagle, and I don't have a worm or a seed to play Prothonotary Warbler. So I think the strategy or the plan here is going to be gain food and do some caching get an extra card from the wood duck and then i will be able to play benelli's eagle and have an extra card or two to tuck under the rough and the hooded crow i think that's the strategy going forward we're hoping the bird feeder cooperates with us the next turn or two but there's definitely a couple ways you could play this. You could play the eight-point bird in the wetlands for seven points. But I also want to have extra cards uh, to utilize my rough and hooded crow. We're, we're probably not going to win the game with the wood duck player. But we are hoping to squeeze out a few more points. And if I didn't have extra cards, I, I wouldn't be able to do so. We'll see how that one plays out. That has a very interesting game state. And I'd like to review it later and, and let me know what you think. All right, and three turns left. We've got, what, 13 egg spaces. I think we need to get Stellar's J down or lay eggs. It's, it's gonna be pretty straightforward. Okay, we're going to discard some extra food and probably max out these eggs or at least come close. Red Wing Blackbird, perfect. A nice seven point play there. 
American Avocet still laying eggs. And three turns left. We will continue to lay eggs with the Partridge. Check it out. This is a uh, six point play. Oh man, check it out. We did see the repeat Eastern Imperial Eagle. It has made its appearance again. I wish I had that much food or cards to go with it. That's unfortunate. Um, think I'm think I'm out of time on the White Stork player. Uh, let's move on to the Kingfisher. You can see we're not playing many other birds unless they are in the seven, eight, nine point range. I think we played that Gallinule earlier just to free up some egg space. That was a five point play. And then I think we're gonna play Stellar's J eventually to free up some space on the Red Winged Blackbird. But a lot of these actions are just laying eggs, and that's completely fine. It's nice. It's, it's pretty satisfying to have built these engines out, and then they're finally going to work. And we're just deciding which player do we steal a rat from for the little owl. Trying to play these hands as objectively as possible, as if we are in the running for everything. And who are we going to select here? And after a little contemplating, we are going to steal it from the Wood Duck player, just in case that trips them up. Which, arguably, you could say it did. Um, we were not able to get another rat for the Golden Eagle, but we got another worm, I believe, for the Prothonotary Warbler, so it didn't mess us up too bad, but... Definitely want to be strategic when you have a stealing bird, like the little owl. One tip to improve your wingspan play that I hardly ever talk about because it's so simple and everyone's already figured it out probably, but how you view the game on the digital version. When I switched from habitat view to the, the um, overhead view like this, I drastically improved. When you're first downloading this app, you like to go into the habitat view and you see these little bird animations and then you're like flipping through the habitats and you're thinking, you know, what, what bird did I put in the forest or how many birds do I have in the grassland? What do I need to do here? And when you go through this overhead view, um, I just think it's much easier to see the whole layout to plan your turns. Uh, I've never really said that on another video, but I, I'm thinking that's a tip because some players play habitat view and I cannot keep track of what birds are going where. So Benelli's eagle is going in the grassland. Remember, we have um, that goal, birds in the grassland, so we might as well tie it. Maybe snag a couple points there. And that Benelli's eagle uh, was a nice, what was it, 11 Point play, 10 point play, we'll see. And the pink powers, they're all activating. That's why we keep flip, flipping back to other screens. Man, that snow bunting, was that clutch or was it not clutch? That's turned into like a 14 point bird right now. 14 point bird. Stellar's J, why are we playing the Stellar's J? Because the Omnivore Expert bonus card and I freed up an egg space on the Red Winged Blackbird. If you have a tuck and lay bird, you want to make use of it. And so you want to free up spaces um, accordingly so you can make use of its, its brown power. And this white sword player has been a, a dilemma the whole game. We only have two egg spaces left. So, I mean, I could lay two eggs but it looks like I've decided that it might be better to play an eagle. Um, I have a seven point eagle. It's, it's gonna turn into five points after the egg cost. 
but that is a classic case of running out of egg space, and I didn't have any other cards to play. So we, I think we cashed on the Blue Jay, and uh, trying to make the most of that one, but it, it looks a little ugly on that side. They're still having a good game. It's still a high-scoring game, but just not as strong as some of the other players. And the Little Owl strikes again. I like that we played the Little Owl over the Peregrine Falcon. It's turned into a nine-point bird. And this game may be closer than I think. If you've played Wingspan, you might know who's winning, but who will be second, third, fourth, and fifth? Stay tuned. There's only one turn left. Feeling good about it. Like I said, I tried to play these as objectively as possible. Um, and, and I've played hundreds of Wingspan games, and there's still things to learn about this game. There's still mistakes made, and that's part of uh, the learning. I think I learn more so when I lose than when I win. And here we go, last turn. All of these teal powers are going to activate. Uh, that's one of my tips uh, for round four. Don't forget about the teal powers. And when Oceania comes out, don't forget about the yellow game end powers. I've already seen in the playtesting, oops, I forgot to have extra food for the yellow power. Or I didn't have an extra bird to play for the yellow power. Or I forgot about the nectar battle. And there's a lot of things going on, and there's only more expansions coming to this game. Okay, and uh, we got some extra food here. We could play Prothonotary. We could force down the Golden Eagle. I think we... Surely we play Prothonotary Warbler for seven points. I think we're just double checking the math because uh, with the, that hooded crow and rough, there's an extra, there's extra points to be snagged there. Uh, we do go with the seven point prothonotary warbler. I haven't had much success on my re rolls for for those seeds. Well, you know, we back out of the warbler. Um, just taking our time here. Honestly, if the Prothonotary Warbler is only seven points, I think it would be better to gain food here because you could potentially receive another seed. Oh, shoot. I should have kept on. I should have kept that Golden Eagle. That was not. I should have waited for the reroll to see if there were enough seeds to gain. And now I discarded the Golden Eagle. So like we said, there's a mistake there in round four. We were hoping to do some more caching and then leave these extra cards. But even doing so, if you slow this down and do the math, I think we still score more points with the Hooded Crow and the Rough than playing the Prothonotary Warbler. I think it turns into a nine-point play. Some of these uh, math calculations with the end-of-round goals, they kind of hurt your brain. There's so much going on. And here we go. We are wrapping up. I'm excited to see how this turns out. Um, everybody did well on their bonus cards except for this player. I think if the spotted, I think if they grab, you know, a different bonus card with the spotted owl, maybe a falcon or bonus card or something, squeeze out four or seven more points. Um, th this this player may be in the triple digits. We'll, we'll see. And we are not going to utilize the Chihuahuan Raven this this uh, turn. We have plenty of food. The Little Owl strikes again. We have five food to discard on the Teal Power. And check out these Teal Powers. They are going to activate here shortly. A lot of these turns didn't need much explanation, right? You, you want to score the most points. You're not searching the deck for any more cards. You don't want to gain a lot of food or take the gain food action unless it's going to score you points.
All right, here come the teals. And man, um, this, this Wood Duck player pivoted quite a bit, and it was tricky. But I think we did uh, the best with a forest engine. I think we were missing an egg layer. And we're, we're hard on ourselves, but I think the Wood Duck player is still in the triple digits. Let's check it out. Honey Buzzard gets some worms. Doesn't really matter in case there's a food tie. And the Common Starling. Check it out. Five tucks. That is nice. Turned into an 11-point bird. It takes sometimes five minutes in real life to calculate the score, but on the digital version, it takes 30 seconds. So let's see the scores here. All right, the Waxwing player has the most bird points. And the end of round goals was, was kind of negligible. And check out how low the spoonbill is with those eggs. It looks like they are far behind. Goodness sake. Check out these scores, people. 93, 103, 100, 104. And the Spoonbill player continues. 156 points. I told you this score was crazy. Even if you're not a beginner, 128 tucks. We were dealt the dream hand. But but look at second, third, fourth, fifth place. Um, if you are struggling to get in the, the 90s or the 100s, it is still possible. I think... Uh, the odds were just stacked against everybody else because I had Chiff Chaff, Gold, Duck, Martin, Bunting, Blackbird. It all came together for the Spoonbill. The Wood Duck um, did end up in the triple digits, I believe. And, um, you know, it's hard, to, it's hard to laugh at a 103 score, right? Um, I think the Golden Eye gave us a couple extra eggs. Um, maybe some opportunities with uh, maximizing the rough and the hooded crow. And then we have the passerine specialist over here that started off with a brown pelican. And uh, a toey, a hummingbird. We did share a lot of food, and a red-winged blackbird kind of saved us at the end. Turned into 104 points. Not bad on their side. This is the player that just didn't reach its potential. Uh, we went with the black red start for the food cost round two goal. The red start really didn't pan out like we liked. Uh, the white stork, it drew, it, it didn't really give us that awesome card. It gave us a partridge, but then that, uh, you know, ended up basically filling up all of our egg capacity in, in two or three turns. And so we, we wasted some turns here. Gaining food, um, playing a spotted owl for three points. Uh, we just missed. And a 93 points, so, some, sometimes that's a high score. Sometimes 93 points wins you the game. So not terrible. But uh, he was just way behind some of the other engines that have been built. And then we had the Chihuahuan Raven player that had the Prairie Manager bonus card. Um, the Little Owl, Swainson's Hawk, the Starling. We did have those food sharing powers. But a 100 score right on the dot, uh, not bad, not bad. Maybe we play the Peregrine Falcon instead of the Sparrow, squeeze out a few more points. Thank you guys for watching. New players, please do not expect a 156 score. That is not usually going to happen. But thank you for watching. I hope it helped. I will leave you with the round four tips. And check out some of my other gameplay videos. See you next time on Master Wing.